So alright guys, back again with another video. Today we're in London with my friend Picasso and we're starting off the artist interview series. So, nice to meet you Picasso. Hey, nice one man. Good to yeah, see you. Good long to see time you. no see mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, today I just want to, um, you know, give your followers and my followers a chance to, you know, share your story and some of your artwork and uh, just to get to know you a bit better and, yeah. you know, share your work to the world all pretty right, much. Man. Well. I'd introduce myself as online, yeah, Picasso, that's where you can find me on Instagram. Um, but the name Picasso kind of came from an uh, old name, Just Casa, an old tag that I used to have as a kid and as a teenager and yeah. that. But that, that evolved to Picasso as I've started to do more artistic and more work on canvas rather than in the street. So what sort of artwork do you do? Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of doing graphic art, graphics like graphic paintings and fine art, yeah. uh, which is like experimental textured work. So I'd put myself as a visual artist and someone who use, likes to use bold subjects and bold colours and stuff like yeah. that. I've seen yeah. you do a lot of street art and graffiti yeah. on your Yeah, yeah, and also well. I didn't mention that, yeah, I'm, a, I'm definitely seeing myself as a street artist as well. Yeah. Like not just working within the canvas, within the studio. Got to yeah. take it into the public space, you know. Definitely, bro. Mm. So, um, like, what introduced you to artwork? How did you get into art? Just drawing, man. Drawing as a kid. Just drawing for hours and hours, watching cartoons like Scooby Doo, uh, pirate films and stuff, and just copying the the, the cartoons and the, the monsters and stuff from there. Honestly, just like just drawing and being obsessed with yeah. it when I was a kid. And then that got into just wanting to study at school because it was just my passion. That's what I enjoyed to do. And if I could study at school, yeah, that's great, you know. So, Similar um, to me, man. Starting with cartoons. Yeah, yeah like Yu-Gi-Oh! Or fucking Pirates of the Caribbean, Scooby-Doo <laughs> and that. <laughs> They're the main ones I was drawing from. Yeah, so yeah. like, who uh, inspires you as in like art-wise? Do you have any favourite artists? Mm, well, yeah, I've got a lot of favourite artists who are dead as well, which is unfortunate. But who are alive, man. Do you know Acres? The graffiti artist from Dublin, his shit's crazy. Um, who else inspires me now? Your your work uh, kind of reminds me of like uh, Shepherd Ferry, Obey, you know the stencil. Yeah, work yeah, he he did inspire me a lot, a lot, especially when I was younger. He inspired me a hell of a lot. But now I still think his work's amazing. But I'm not looking so carefully as I'm trying to move away from that kind of work in a way like you know you can't be too similar to someone you need yeah. to find your own own path own yeah. way of working and Defense in your own style if, yeah. if i keep looking carefully at people like shepherd fairy i'll just end up looking like <coughs> stuff that's already been done so yeah i take pinches of soul here and there so um what's your proudest moment so far <laughs> in your art proudest career? in my well very the proudest moment for me very recently actually getting paid to do art like at a decent level yeah. like I was painting a cafe in Archway North London and painted two big walls for them and I painted the menu for them as well and yeah that was a four day job and they paid me decently which was the most I've ever been paid for art so that's definitely one like a good moment for me happy moment and proud moment but 
just thinking when when's the next job gonna come, you know? How just did gotta you, look forward yeah. to that. <laughs> How did you go about getting the, the job then? How did you go about getting the work? Just from so from my first year of uni halls, met a, met a friend called Ria. Um she works in one of the coffee shops that the owners own. They've got two coffee shops and she literally hooked the whole thing up for me. She the manager said to Ria, my friend, uh, we need an artist, we need a big mural artist to paint the walls in the cafe. Yeah. And then she recommended me and it was just like word of mouth kind of thing, I suppose. So what sort of uh, work was it? What did you do? So the first wall was like a 3D geometric pattern of cubes, all multicolored, a lot of pastel colors, yellows, pinks, purples, lime green, just all which makes kind of like a 3D illusion, I suppose, like kind of as if it was a wallpaper, but it's a painting. Uh, that was about two meters by three meters or something like that, so it was big. And then on the other wall was a tree inspired by the Paddington tree uh, from the movie, which the manager, she really wanted something like that. So she asked me, can you replicate it, but in my style? And it was a tree, and that, a blossom tree in autumn. So it was kind of just winding across a couple of walls. <laughs> so is that your first mural or have you done any in the past? No, I've done, a f I've done a few other murals in cafes and for people and stuff, but that was the biggest job I've done yet, uh, for sure. That was intense. Four days of hard working, yeah, but a lot of fun. And yeah, another proud moment, I suppose, like, since I've made a lot of political art in the past, not for a couple of months, but I made a lot, a uh, big series on political figures, and most of them are negative, you know, <laughs> you know, most of them are, most of them are... They're uh, quite funny, though. They're most of them are highlighting the negatives in the politicians. However, one of them was like a positive Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, Jedi slash Corbin figure, the Jedi Jezza, and yeah, I managed to get a framed print of my my illustration in his office in Westminster, and got got a picture with him holding it, looking like a <laughs> looking like a Jedi. <laughs> so, how did you get into artwork, and uh, how would you describe your style? So, from what I've seen, you use a lot of stencils, a lot of stencil work. Mm, mm, mm. So, how did you get into that? Well, yeah, yeah, I do. I love print. I love screen printing and do using stencils for artwork. And it actually came from, so it must be year 11 or year 10 in school. So we had a paper cutting class where we had two sheets of paper, one black, one white. So we'd use the black underneath the white and then cut our design, which we wanted, into the white paper. And then peel, yeah. peel it away, peel the shapes away that we were creating and then the black paper would be revealed underneath. So that was kind of like a simple paper cutting class, but it sparked the idea of using stencils and using the craft knife. And like, it was just good practice, yeah. you know, to cut the intricate shapes and to get the right kind of curves, you need to be able to use the craft knife, to use the scalpel. Yeah. So it just takes practice. And from then I was carried on doing it. And yeah, it, it, it comes to good results. To be so honest, how, yeah. how old were you then? 16. You were 16? Yeah, I think that was the first time I probably got into stencils, 16, yeah. So, in terms of like street art, graffiti wise, you started with, you know, your little pens and then drawing. Yeah, yeah. Drawing things at age 11 and then you, uh, once you got introduced to... Uh, yeah, so we started things. from um, the, what are they called, the chrome pens. Um, so they started stealing pens from Quality Save. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we started stealing pens from Quality Save, probably when we were like 12. And then it moved on to the car paint, the car spray paint yeah. from the from the local like uh, hardware store. Like just, just going in and getting the car paints. And they, were, they used to be like two, three pounds. And the silver used to be really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. The chrome was really nice. And the others were so shit. So very watery, horrible. And then, Trippy. and then when once we turned like fifteen, sixteen, we f kind of figured out that Montana paint's the best paint to use, mm -hmm. and it's actually similar price as well. Yeah. But we always had trouble buying it because um, they kind of had uh, over eighteen law thing because of the solvents. So a few times we had to get people to buy it. For <laughs> us. <laughs> Peak times. <laughs> Why didn't you say when you gave a crack at twenty quid and you ran off with it? Nah, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> to go, to mm, yeah, that's a funny story. That's a bad story. Yeah, literally though. <laughs> that is a funny story though. Yeah. Could say that. <laughs> go on, go on, say it. Yeah, back then when we were younger, man. 
had to having to get people to buy us paint one of the worst times was we were in town, we were in Manny in, in the in the centre, near Ancoats actually. Uh we gave one shifty looking guy, I don't know what we were thinking. We were young, we were like fifteen, fourteen. We gave some guy twenty quid, he said, Can you go in there and buy it for us? And he turned out to just be some crackhead and he just ran off. <laughs> he just literally ran off. And I still I still remember his face. From the work that I've seen, you know, some of the stuff that you put on your Instagram, mm. some of the work you shared, it's kind of political. Yeah. So do you want to talk to us about that? Yeah. So uh, you said you were, you were inspired a bit by uh, Shepard Ferry and he... His yeah, yeah, like definitely his, his piece for Obama and the colour schemes and the, the yeah. way he uses shapes yeah. uh, to create a face really inspired me from a young age, definitely. And definitely modern politics is inspiring for all the wrong reasons to be honest like especially in america yeah. what you hear is going on over there but you kind of do yeah. it in like a humorous way it's kind of funny it's not so uh dull and yeah it's supposed to be kind of boring, satirical you know like you see the image here of trump with a gun in his mouth i'm not literally wishing death upon him <laughs> but it's kind of like a satirical thing because he talks so much shit you may as well put a gun in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the, fir the first one I saw you do um, was a poster in Shoreditch, I think, in London, of mm. uh, Boris Johnson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just had, had this series of multiple politicians just kind of with uh, holding their uh, gun in their own mouth. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just, it's just like... A lot, a lot of people saw it online, a lot of people were taking photos and sharing it and stuff, so... Yeah, I made it c for the reaction as well, because yeah. I knew people aren't used to seeing this it's kind of stuff. People aren't used to seeing this in the public space, yeah. like uh, one of these famous politicians who's always on the TV, who the media gives a great spotlight. You don't usually see them shone in this light on, in the public space mm. on the street, and that's why I put those there, because yeah. everyone can see it, it's free, it's for everyone, it's free art, and it's just kind of my opinion and I hope people take it on and, and like the work I'm making. It's not too serious either. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, because politics is too serious. Like I'm trying to make it a bit satirical and use images, man, to express my, my opinions and feelings, yeah, you know? Yeah. The same way in, as which advertisement forces us to buy so many things or gets inside of our brain using the public space, that's what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but the opposite way around. So how, how, do you, how do you create these posters and how do you put them on the wall, what's the, how do you do that? If well, somebody, if somebody was want, wanted to do similar work to you in street art and put their posters up around... I usually um, look, for, look for a lot of pictures, find the right angle for the politician, find one where they're most likely speaking with their mouth open for my series and then find another photograph of someone's kind of like arm or hand with a gun and you've kind of got to merge them together using Photoshop and then take it onto Illustrator onto another program and illustrate all the lines and yeah. then create the shapes after that. That's my process, that's briefly my process but obviously I, do you, I like do you taking... Like a, a, a special glue or what sort of... Ah, paper so you're you talking for physically yeah, putting yeah, it up. I mean, so after I've made the design after I've printed the poster or I've illustrated it on a piece of paper, we'll have to make the glue, obviously the simple wheat flour um, recipe, literally boiling water, flour, mix it together, it makes a very strong glue, <laughs> take it out in a bucket and just go paste the wall up first, get the, get the poster as flat as you can on the paste and then do another layer on top. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically how to do it. It's not, not too hard, but yeah, you do need some motivation to go out and do it man, at night. Like, it's, fun, it's good fun though. Addictive though. Sometimes it pays off. I've had times where it, where it's not worked out when I've gone back and things things have been teared down the next day several times. So you win some, you lose some, you know. Some of them have got attention from the media, some yeah. of them have been teared down the next day. So you got to just take it as it comes. Have you ever been arrested doing it? You've ever like, had doing a fine? posters? You no, been in trouble with the never police? been caught doing posters because it's so quick. You just post it up quick time on the main road, no one no one notices, but with spray painting, oh, that's a bit more reckless, that's a bit more. If you... When I was younger, yeah, I was about, well, I was in court on my 16th birthday. No way. Yeah, they put, can't believe it, innit? They put me in court on my 16th birthday because um, I'd previously been in trouble a couple of times just for, you know, tagging, doing graffiti around the area. And then the second time, the last time I got caught, we were on the canal in Salford, and then two undercover P 
people on bikes were like just watching us from the bridge and we aren't they were all blacked out in clothing and we thought they were gonna rob us or something so we walked off and then they follow us and then they're like please stop so obviously I run off jump down the stairs run all the way down the Salford shipping canal and eventually get caught because they were on bikes <laughs> and then they end up taking me to the cells for like from like 8 p.m. to 3 in the morning or something that's when we got home and my mum and dad had to come pick me up obviously I was 16, 16 or 15 <laughs> and yeah that was not, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> Did you get a fine for that or anything? 600 pound oh, fine, nah, had to go, man. yeah, yeah I had to go court twice <laughs> once for before that and once on the 16th birthday as well, yeah. You got any other stories to tell or anything like that? Mm, yeah, I don't even know, I don't know what story to tell to be fair now. It's gone, my mind's gone blank right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just have a conversation, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> What sort of things do you have planned for the future and what do you, what would you like to achieve? What's your goals? Mm. Well, the most immediate future is I've got my last year of uni, so I'm going to focus a lot of energy on that for the final year for my dissertation and my final major project, mm. so I know I'm, that's the most immediate one. After that, I'm hoping I can just be painting my whole life and just keep progressing and make, doing bigger and bigger walls internationally and work with artists all over the world, you know, that's what I'm hoping for. But yeah. see, that's the dream, that's the dream. Um, to just be able to do it for life and make a living from it. Would you um, consider exhibitions or get yeah, represented by a gallery? Yeah, 100%. Or? If, if, I'd love to put on my own and exhibitions and do it independently. And also, on the other hand, getting a gallery to represent you is really great as well. Yeah, yeah. But I just feel like I need to work more and more and get my my art even like much more better before I'm considering that because there's so many amazing artists out there it's a tough world to break into mm -hmm. so I just need to keep keep on making more and more and so, try and try get the quality better and better yeah. uh, and just be motivated yeah anybody you'd like to collaborate with any brands any other artists um I'd love to collaborate with who would I I actually don't know I don't know who I'd like you Let's let's do a collab. Let's do one. Yeah, <laughs> Other than that, I don't know. You know, I I can never can never figure it out when someone asks me who, who, who would I collab fight. with. I don't know. Huh? I don't know because if I could with anyone, anyone or yeah, we're kind we're kind of in the process of doing one now. We're gonna yeah. go collect our yeah our collab in a bit. Mm, I want to collab with graffiti artists and fine artists and so what what graffiti artists? To be fair, saying? yeah, specifically, I like. Uh, Ghost Town from Israel, they're f fucking crazy, crazy graffiti artists, do big walls every week, oh, they're always yeah. doing mad stuff. I don't know if you know, <laughs> if you know One Up, yeah, Human from LA, yeah, she's yeah. like a Philip, I don't know where she's from, but she's an insane artist. Uh, Acres from Ireland, you know, from Dublin, who does a lot of the, the work that looks like it was made on a computer, it's so crisp, it looks amazing. Um, but you just need to check out those artists, hundred percent. Where can people find your artwork, and where can they find you online? Well, uh, online mostly on Instagram, Picasa, or you can find me on Facebook from there as well. Um, not got a website set up yet. Um, focusing on that after my year in uni, I reckon. Mm -hmm. And look out for my work in galleries, in the street, anywhere. Yeah. Mm. So we'll leave a link for uh, Picasso's Instagram down in the description. And yeah, thanks for Big that. Up, bro. Big Thank up. you, bro. Nice one, nice one.